In this Core Mania video, we're gonna talk about the G7. So this is a seventh chord, or a dominant chord. And it's actually not overly difficult to play, but it will come up in your song. So we got open fourth string. We got my second finger here on the third string, second fret. First finger on the second string, first fret. And then I'm using my third finger on the first string, second fret, and play all four strings. This is G7. Now remember, seventh chords, unlike triads, have four different notes in the chord. And so if we do this in order here, we got G is the open fourth string. Then we have D here on the third string, F on the second string, and then B on the first string. If we did it in alphabetical order, those notes would be G, B, D, and F. Remember, all the notes for these chords, we're going to relate them back to the major scale. So if I play G major, I'm going to use the open string here, G, A, B. C, D, E, F sharp, and G. So let's think about what are those notes, G, B, D, and F from the chord, where are they in this scale? So we got G is the root or the tonic. So G, A, B, so B is the third, so the root, the third. And you got C, D, D is the fifth. G, A, B is the third, C, D is the fifth. And then we got E, F sharp, and then G. But wait a second, F sharp, remember the G7 chord, doesn't have F sharp, it has F natural. So the dominant chord, or the seventh chords, they have, compared to the major scale, a flat seventh degree. And so the seventh degree here is F sharp, right? G, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But we're gonna flat it, and flat on the ukulele is gonna be to the left, one fret, and we got F. So there's the notes of the G7 chord based off the scale. So remember those notes, and remember that scale even, and remember that the dominant chords have a flat seven when you're referring them back to the major scale. I know it can be a lot, but the more and more you go over this, the easier it gets to remember. Now what I like to do here is always take this chord shape and see how, how you can slide it up. And it's actually pretty cool because now you start getting into a chord that you can use, if, especially if you like jazz. And so what we have to do here is we take the shape, same fingers I showed you. If we slide it up one fret even, well that's cool except remember this string is open so we also have to move the open string up a fret. Which is going to require me to change fingerings here. So now what I'm doing here is my third finger's on the third string, third fret. My second finger's on the second string, second fret. And now my pinky is on the first string, third fret. And now what I'm gonna use is my first finger here on the fourth string, first fret. So there's, when I slide it up, I gotta do a new finger. So the old G7 was here, and now the new G7 is here. Now, of course, if you're doing a lot of these chords, like what I was doing earlier, you could just play that G7 shape with these fingerings like you're holding here. But typically, if I'm just playing the G7, I'm gonna grab this fingering. All you have to do to remember when you slide the chords up and down is remember where the root of the chord is. And so when you're playing the G7 here, the root is this open four string. So as I move it up, whatever note this is on the four string, that's the name of this chord. So if we're on this, fourth string second fret that's an a note so this shape is what we call an a7 slide up one more fret this note here on the fourth string third fret is a sharp or b flat so this is an a sharp seven or b flat seven slide up again you got b7 c7 and so forth so just remember you got to learn the notes on this fourth string in order to move this particular chord up and down so this is really handy because G7 is going to come up a lot, especially in songs that are in the key of C. That's kind of cool. But if you start getting into different keys, you're going to start having different seventh chords. And this is a great shape because it's actually it's not even a bar chord. You don't have to bar this first finger. So there's no bar in here. And it's actually a fairly, 
it's not a complex chord to play, but sounding wise, yeah, it is, especially for blues or jazz sounding stuff. So what you want to remember is the shape of the G7. So remember, get that down. Remember the notes, G, B, D, and F. And remember that the seventh chords have a flat seventh degree, especially compared to the major scale. And then how can you slide this particular chord up and down and remember the new names? And so a cool little trick you can do, which what I was doing earlier, is if you just take this shape and play it on the third fret, you got, what is that? That's B flat, A, A flat, and G. And it's just come kind of a cool strum pattern. And then your G7 chord.